morning everyone today we are going to discuss about commercial correspondence commercial correspondence is not have hazard lolly polly or slip shard it's not something that uh, you can just write down the way you feel it but there is precise specific specification about the commercial correspondence commercial correspondence has 10 key elements key components are there 10 and you have to follow these 10 key components very religiously very tenaciously you cannot have legal format of letter if you are going to go lower than 10 you can go higher than 10 you can go up to 500 it doesn't matter but it must not be less than 10 and each key element is legal factor legal factor having legal impact on your letter for example if you don't sign the letter not legal if you don't put the date on the letter it's not legal if you don't write three para I placed it's not legal you cannot take the other party to the court and the court is not going to litigate your complaint because your letter is fundamentally flawed it is fundamentally mistaken so 10 key elements 10 key components must be followed in every commercial correspondence these 10 components are number one two address you must write on the left hand corner on the top the address of the person you are sending this letter. The letter will be dispatched to this person is to address. From address. It's your address. You are dispatching the letter to somebody. That will be your address. Right hand side you are going to write date of the letter. Left hand side you are going to come and start with salutation. Like dear brother, honorable collector, honorable judge respect of a teacher, friend, that's called salutation. Below the salutation, you are going to write subject or reference. If you're writing the first, first time this letter, then you are going to write subject. But if you are going to responding someone, you are responding to someone, then you're going to write reference to your letter, reference to the advertisement, reference to this, that. Next would be para 1, para 2, para 3. These are the eight points. Ninth point would be signature. Your signature on the right hand, all the way below the right hand corner of, the, of your letter. Nine and the tenth would be left hand corner of your letter that would be enclosure. So, what would be two edges? From address, salutation, date, subject. Again, five. Para one, para two, para three. Signature and enclosure. All ten. All ten are legal. These are the legal requirement of any kind of com com commercial correspondence because if something goes wrong between the letter dispatcher and the letter receiver. Sender and receiver, if there is any kind of dispute, legal dispute, then you are not going to pick up a gun and go over there and kill that person, but you are going to go to court and the court is not going to accept. It's null and void. Later, if you have not followed these 10 components of the letter, which are legally binding, legal requirement of every single letter. So, if you are aspiring student for MBA or you are in MBA or you completed your MBA remember you cannot have your letter less than 10 more than 10 is okay more than 10 you can go to 1000 you can write whole book volumes it's okay but less than 10 without signature without enclosure without date without salutation without subject reference without power one two three your letter is totally incomplete so now 
you understand all this up to data, up to date, you understand this thing. Para number one, para two, para three, I will explain. Para number one is the introduction of the letter. What is in this letter? You are intro giving introduction to the person who is going to read your letter about this letter. Para number one, introduction. Para number two, theme of the letter, subject matter of the letter, why you have written this letter. This will be in para number two, that is called subject matter, central idea or the theme of the letter. Number three is a punchline. Punchline means you are actually offering the solution to the person or, if you, or you are telling the person what kind of legal course of action you are going to take. If this matter is not resolved amicably or peacefully, if you are planning to go to the court or take this person to the court, you are going to write in third para, third paragraph. That's called punch a line. Then if this matter is not resolved, if I don't get my money back, or if you are not going to pay me my bill, which has been pending for a long time, then now I will take you to the court. This should be in third para. Signature would be on the right hand side. That's your John Hancock. Without Signature letter is a piece of paper, piece of garbage. Left hand side, you, you have enclosure. In enclosure, you are going to, whatever you are sending to that person, like a bill or copy or reminder or previous letters or communication, whatever you have and you are enclosing, you are sending these documents to the receiver of your letter. It should be enclosed into the envelope and uh, write down in your letter that you have enclosed number one, copy of the receipt, number two, check which was bound, number three, the three, three letters you have sent to him for reminder, whatever. Previous converse, conversation, previous correspondence, previous deal, pre previous papers, previous documents. Whatever you are going to send that person as a proof of authenticity of this correspondence goes into enclosure. So these are the 10 key components of commercial correspondence and I'm going to send you in my video you can read and understand more if you have any kind of question or query or confusion anytime. Don't hesitate to reach me. Thank you very much for listening. God bless you all.